this is where we left. So we better get going because we've got seven packs left for the melee DPS. And we are going now with Enhancement. Enhancement has got to some pretty good changes with the rework, pseudo rework for Shadowlands. Besides the fact that they are very nice to play. They are very enjoyable. They are very enjoyable spec. They do have the most versatility out of all the specs. They have the choices to their talents that, that they can choose for AoE, cleave and single target, as well as funnel, increasing their funnel. So their main strength remain, this is something they had in BFA before, they have very good sustained single target. They can continue their cycle, their rotation without the help of too many cooldowns, their damage that doesn't spike too high, which can be a negative, as we have seen in these rankings before, the lack of a burst, but when you do lack a burst, generally you do have very good sustain. They also have very good sustain when it comes to cleave, and when it comes to AoE, as long as the as long as the targets aren't too many, it's pretty good to stay in there as well. And their priority damage is also very good. The fact that they can use their you know do everything ability, crash lightning for their cleave and their extra AoE can allow them to funnel damage on their primary target very well without having to lose single target damage to do AoE. They can still continue their single target rotation with Crash Lightning active. The main crown jewel really of enhancement is just the fact that they can go different talent choices for different setups. They can choose Storm Flurry and even Elemental Assault for extra single target and cleave damage through their Storm Strike, but then they can also go Ice Strike to reset their primarily their Flame Shock for more dot damage as well as if they want to they can funnel for primal lava actuator le legendary damage of their lava burst or they can reset the frost shock cooldown for their hailstrom another very good talent very good versatile choice in that tree where you can go for a six target extra damage of your frost shock which is very powerful this makes it very varied however we do have some negatives obviously number one just get it out of the way their covenants are terrible for enhancement it's, you know, three completely unsynergistic covenants that really do nothing besides doing some AoE. And then Primordial Way, which is much stronger for Elemental and also even Restoration over Enhancement. And this kind of hurts, you know. It is a spec that also requires uptime. They do require to be constantly auto-attacking and constantly using abilities to reset their passives to keep up their... DOT in Flame Shock to build up their stacks of Mistrum weapons, so losing uptime hurts them more than some other specs. And we also have to mention a problem, which is RNG. Now, we do remember the BFA version of the slot machine announcement, where everything was around Stormbringer and constantly resetting your Storm Strike. This has gone, uh, this type of RNG to this extent, but RNG is still here. Remember that, you know, Wind Fury weapon has a chance to trigger extra attacks. You have Stormbringer, which has a chance to have your special attacks resetting the cooldown of your storm strike and now you have maelstrom weapon which has your damage with a melee weapon give you a chance to gain a maelstrom weapon stack but you do have quite a few chances random chances to gain a buff to gain a steroid and you can't really manage that you can't really cheat the system you just have to roll the dice and hope that it works now obviously rather than having one gigantic slot machine having multiple smaller ones is going to lower the effect of these RNG elements, you're not going to be going through very starving phases over time because you're not really proccing your Stormbringer, now the issue is going to be weakened, but it can still be a problem. Despite being very varied, you do still have, this is sort of the downside of this, a lot of things to keep track of. You have to keep track of your Maelstrom stacks, you have to consume them properly, you have to use your Flame Shock on cooldown and try to use it properly on all the different targets, you have to keep up your Crash Lightning when you're cleaving on your e ing when you're using certain legendaries like the Frost Switch legendary, you even have to pay more attention to the cooldown of your Storm Strike and using it properly. Even when you're using the other decent legendary uh, lava actuators for your lava lash and extra cleave, two, three, four targets cleave with spread flame shock. It's another thing you have to take into account, so it is prone to losing more DPS the more mistakes you do compared to some other specs. Lastly, their defensives are still weak, same for elemental, and it also doesn't bring anything special to a raid. As I mentioned before for elemental, not special enough to be considered very good utility. They do have though, so we are leaving with a question mark, they do have Wind Fury Totem. Wind Fury Totem might be just enough to make essentially an one announcement shaman mandatory for your raid comp. We don't know yet how strong it's gonna be. It's likely that deeper into the expansion it's gonna become stronger and stronger, so for now we don't, we're not quite sure. If it is mandatory then Announcement is an easy S tier spec purely because of it, purely because you need one, so it's an S spec by default. But for now, we're gonna assume it's just a decent utility 
and not really that mandatory so without that announcement remains a pretty good spec pretty varied spec they can change their talents to change the damage profile which is always very very good and i wouldn't complain if i were an announcement shaman main compared to the state i was in in bfa now we are moving over to assassination rogue now what's up with assassination well nothing um, assassination is the same spec it's been for years which was one of the critiques I gave to the spec, but let's go over the positives first. They do have, well I mentioned it's the same, so they do have great sustained single target damage, they do have very good sustained cleave damage, they do have a very good single target cooldown in Vendetta, their entire primary rotation has remained the same, revolving around keeping up your Garrote and your Rapture on the target, and then dumping your combo points on Envenom, sometimes pooling your energy to have some more higher damage windows. It is a slower spec, which is sometimes, you know, a positive for certain players wanting to play a more slow spec. They do have very good funnel, very good um, center damage on a, prim on a primary target, thanks to Venomous Wounds. The fact that they gain more and more and more energy, the more dots they can put on the targets, allows them to, to funnel even more damage on a primary target when you're fighting in an AoE situation. And you want to take down a primary target you can rupture and garrote three four or five of them and then dump all of your extra energy on a single target it's very good for the types of damage profiles in castle natria they will be able to have also very excellent execute damage thanks to their zoldic legendary their old legion legendary as well as their blindside talent which is going to make it even better in execute phase being a rogue we have to mention again their obscene defensive tools with you know faint evasion cloak of shadows that as well as their great mobility their sprint and their shadow step making them very very mobile and agile on to the negatives of assassination rogue now assassination has of course very slow ramp up because a lot of their damage is based on dot's it means they have to spend time for their energy region time for the combo point generation to apply the dot's and then wait for the dot's to tick over time so their burst is completely lacking in cleave in aoe it's just non-existent it's very 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 poor which is particularly painful when we look at the damage profiles of Castor Natria. Being able to not immediately jump on a target and do very high damage is gonna hurt them when it comes to the priority of the spec, when you want to fill your melee spots. They do also have not very exciting covenants. They have been nerfed over time. Yes, Serrated Bone Spike has been nerfed to the ground. Sepsis and Equim Reprimand weren't even good to begin with. Now they only have Flagellation as a good complement of their Vendetta to grant them haste within Vendetta, but that's about it. And also does nothing for their lack of cleave and AoE. They also have very poor and very outdated at this point, last talent rows. The choices between Venom Rush, Alacrity and Exsanguinate are very poor. Blizzard has not, never, quite been able to make Exsanguinate a proper good burst cooldown, which would have been amazing if it worked for Assassination, a 45 second burst. Sometimes it kind of was possible in Legion, but mm, not really. And then the last row is uh, tragic, really, really bad. What should have happened to Assassination is giving them the same Feral Druid treatment. I know it seems weird to, to say about a spec, make them like Feral Druid, but Primal Wrath for Feral Druid to give you an AoE ability that insta-cast rip on all targets would have been great for Crimson Tempest. Instead of giving you a useless DOT on that talent, they could have given you an AoE Rapture. Particularly good because it scales with Venomous Wounds. Or make Crimson Tempest damage work with Venomous Wounds. That would have made them much better for funnel, much better for priority damage and slightly better for AoE. But as it is, the last talent row is really poor. But closing in on the main problem of assassination is the class envy. Again, just like Outlaw. Uh, assassination just does what Satati does but worse. Satati is going to have better burst in single target than assassination, is going to have better funnel than assassination, is going to have better cleave. So basically nothing that assassination does does it better than subtlety. Which is going to bring the question, why are you being specced assassination when you, when you can play subtlety? Which is a major problem with pure DPS specs. When you can choose between three of them, there is always going to be a clear best one, which is going to make the other two much worse than they actually are. You know, if assassination was, for example, a demon hunter spec, it could have been way more playable, as it is way more different than Havoc. But since it's next to subtlety, it's going to suffer even more. Now one of my titles for most improved specs coming into Shadowlands is Red Paladin. I already rated them for Mythic Plus, saying that they would have been worse when it came to pack groups and when it came to having to manage all their cooldowns in very successive pools of Mythic Plus. 
and it would have been better in a coordinated group and in a coordinated setting. Guess where you need coordination? Raid encounters. Red Paladin has likely more burst than they ever had. They have incredible single target burst, they have incredible AoE burst. In both situations they are excellent. What's even better is that it's not exclusive to talent setups. I mentioned this before as a positive and also a negative for many specs. They can have very excellent damage profile but it's going to be exclusive to certain talents. Once you have to lose that talent, for example to go from single target to cleave or for AoE to single target, you lose the damage profile. Ret doesn't. Ret has baseline very good damage in both single target and AoE and can enhance it with talents. Execution sentence for their single target, they have Seraphim for both single target and AoE, they have Final Reckoning for AoE, which is also fine for single target. The new additions that they had just make them so much stronger because before, or right now in BFA, as you know, actually no, we are in pre-patch, we already have these things. In BFA, you only had your wings and nothing else. Now you have a much better 30 second cooldown execution sentence, you have a 1 minute final reckoning and then you have a 45 second seraphim. You can now essentially cycle 1 minute cooldown windows. You can go execution sentence, seraphim and final reckoning and then you can go execution sentence, seraphim, final reckoning and wings. This is extremely powerful. 1 minute burst windows are going to be way more viable and way more effective in a raid encounter. And the fact that you still maintain your default damage for single target and AoE and you, you don't lose it by choosing these talents make you even stronger. You have excellent defensives, purely on the basis of having an immunity, which makes you excellent by default, and you also have excellent secondary utility. As in, you don't have a raid buff, you don't have a raid debuff, you don't have, you know, some externals like darkness or like rattling cry, but you have other things. You have blessing of protection, you have blessing of freedom, you have leonance, you have blessing of sacrifice, which can be seen as a tank external, actually. And now you even have default Devotion Aura, which is default 3% damage reduction to the raid, which can be seen as a raid buff. Obviously, Prot Paladin and Holy Paladins will also be able to give that out, so it's not as strong, but at least it's there. And finally, your priority damage is also nice. Even when you're doing your AoE burst, with your Execution Sentence, with your Blade of Wrath, with your Judgment, you're still gonna do priority damage on the primary target, which is good. On to the negatives though. It's red, so they are super immobile. They are super slow, that's a big negative. They have very poor cleave, as I mentioned this before, one of the worst aspects of Ret, when I mentioned them alongside the Elemental, is that they can only hit one target or they can hit 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. They can't really hit two, they are in a dead zone on two targets. They have downtime between CDs in terms of damage massively. This is a much lessened problem, as I mentioned, because now their CD windows are one minute apart instead of two minutes, so lesser problem now. As I mentioned, they do lack the primary utility, which would make you want to bring a rat for sure, okay? Like Arcan Intellect, like Fortitude, right? They don't have that. Their main strongest legendaries have currently been nerfed by quite a bit. Final Verdict for their single target has been heavily nerfed and their Med Paragon for their wings duration has been nerfed. Med Paragon used to be 4 second extra wings, it's been nerfed down to 1. And Final Verdict was 50% chance to reset the cooldown of Amir of Rat and activate it and now it's 15%, so right now pretty heavily nerfed legendaries. And lastly, this has to be mentioned, while having massive burst, the massive burst requires some setup of also heavy uptime. They need to keep generating holy power to plan the holy power and spend it on things like execution sentence, which costs three, things like seraphim, which costs three. So it takes time for them to set it, to set it all up, which can be a negative. All in all, they are still very solid very good burst cooldown which has been made stronger because now it can be used in more windows more times more often which makes them simply more viable in raid encounters now we go on the weaker of the two death knight specs although still just fine which is unholy decay unholy decay's main strength are the fact that they do have pretty consistent single target damage but the real niche the real thing you would want an unholy decay for is their very high burst single target very high burst AoE, particularly their AoE. While nerfed in terms of numbers, maximum numbers, it's still much less relevant in raids compared to the mega pools of Mythic Plus. They do have pretty good legendary variety. They can have the deadliest coil to heavily reduce their dark transformation. They have their death certainty to heavily reduce their death and decay, which goes very well with their Night Fae Covenant for half time on that effect, as well as Frenzied Monstrosity for just hexer burst damage. Although the negative would be that they have been nerfed quite a bit over time. They do have good priority damage because their entire build is, a, is about building up stacks on one target and then blowing it up. And as I mentioned, specs with pets have a 
easier time doing priority damage since they're white auto attacks and their basic single target abilities are gonna be hitting their primary target anyways which makes them have a better priority target damage and let's point out their amazing utility it doesn't seem much at first glance that creep is going to be extremely useful in three to four uh, boss fights and the return of anti-magic zone is what is going to make them so strong anti-magic zone is one of those things that might very likely make one death knight mandatory in your raids or maybe even two because this is an insane external to give to a dps which is going to make them very valuable i know it might feel sad for you dk players being wanted in a raid because you bring utility but that's gonna be a thing guaranteed now on to the negatives similar to ret their two target cleave is pretty weak their pet is going to have single target or aoe damage they have single target or aoe damage they don't really have abilities that hit two targets or three targets so their two target only damage is weak because it's basically just a single target or aoe there is no in between they have poor covenants when it comes to anything that is not aoe i mentioned just about the only way they can make it valuable outside of aoe is if they take that certainty together with their let's do night fey essentially giving them permanent uptime on their death and decay so they would be gaining eight percent strength which is good for single target but besides that the covenants are poor they are still very slow as a spec they have atrocious mobility their burst setup is based on festering wounds which means it takes time you have to use your festering strike multiple times and then you have to burst them up which takes time it takes runes and it takes runic power to set it up it's not instant which is going to hurt when it comes to requiring snap damage on a on a primary target as well as setting up their cooldowns while being strong unholy assault dark transformation as well as apocalypse requires some setup and we should also mention that a lot of their setup when it comes to cleave and aoe is tied to stationary targets within their death and decay they can't just do it whenever if you have a burst situation where you have to be on the move for example death knights lose massively unholy that is so all in all they are still a very solid spec they have the strengths of their burst in aoe and cleave and good priority damage however a lot of their strength comes from the existence of anti-magic zone which is going to be incredibly valued in a raid encounter danger danger we are entering a steer zone stay clear of the doors sneaking through the doors in S tier is Havoc Demon Hunter. I'm going to be honest with you, my hot take is that Demon Hunter is a B tier at the best spec. Let's look at what's up with their S tier. They do have still, despite the few changes they've gotten in Shadowlands, changing some of the talents and the way they want to play, they do have amazing burst and amazing AoE, like in BFA. This is thanks to most of their abilities being able to hit multiple targets, even the ones they normally use in an AoE rotation, like Blade Dance, Immolation Aura, Eye Beam. It's just free AOE estate. They still have good burst and finally at last they can have a slightly better rotation because now Unbound Chaos is very strong. Unbound Chaos is going to make your Fell Rush and partially even your Vengeful Retreat more valuable in your rotation. Because of Unbound Chaos they can also play with Momentum, they can play with Master of the Glaive, they can go with a certain legendary Fell Bombardment to heavily spice up the way their rotation plays out and make them just a better spec to play which was sorely needed ever since Legion. They do not have ramp up, they are quick and ready to go, they don't need to set up their damage, they have amazing mobility between their double jump and glide, which actually can be useful to dodge certain mechanics, their fell rush and their vengeful retreat, amazing mobility, great defensives, carried by being able to have an immunity, as well as an external for the raid in darkness, and all of this together would make them a decent B tier spec. However, what jumps the Q into S tier is going to be Chaos Brand. Chaos Brand and the magical damage debuff they give is just too strong to pass up. It means you have to have a guaranteed Demon Hunter in the raid. What makes them even stronger than, for example, Mage Spec, where you have to choose, you have multiple specs to choose from, or even a Monk, where you are the only DPS and you can be benched to bring in a healer or a tank with the debuff you want. Demon Hunters are the only spec for DPS in their class, and what's even better, is their tank version vengeance is currently one of the weakest tank specs and it is not going to be favored at all coming into the raids which means they are the prime pick for this debuff so this is a guaranteed s tier at the same time they are also pretty much the worst or one of the worst specs you can choose to have two of in the same raid there are plenty of other specs that can do what demon hunter does better than them so after you 
fill your demon hunter slot there is going to be way less incentive to bring two demon hunters in the same raid looking at the negatives as to why they would be b tier normally they have very low sustained damage when it comes to aoe partially but specifically when it comes to single target when their i beam is on cooldown when their immolation aura into unbound chaos is on cooldown and when their fell barrage if they're taking it is on cooldown we're talking about a 45 a 30 and a one minute cooldown so they are pretty long their damage is one of the weakest of all mini dps they are basically just using demon's bite chaos strike and blade dance it is super low which is very painful specifically the single target portion the raids are going to be way more heavy on single target the amount of free cleave and free aoe damage you can do which is going to pump up the damage on the meters of demon hunter like it happened in bfa is going to be way less relevant and way less needed and this is going to hurt demon hunter in the long run this reliance on cds it, they can have an annoying rng element because of chaos strike is still rng based ever since it wasn't based on crit meaning it scaled over time now it's just a flat percentage it can give them some starving problems of generation and another problem caused by their much more varied rotation is the fact that now you have to use mobility to do dps if you want to use unbound chaos with your fell rush if you even want to play with momentum with your vengeful retreat you're basically dumping mobility for damage which can be very dangerous and lastly the covenant options are terrible because right now sinful brand is just about the only good for everything type of covenant this sums up our first s tier specs from melee the weakest of the s tier specs so let's go over the top two i wonder who they are second on the podium is going to be frost dk the niche of frost death knight is the ability they have to tune their cooldowns for all types of damage profile and all types of damage windows needed in an encounter they have baseline empowering rune weapon they have pillar of frost they have remorseless winter they have the now baseline frost Worms fury and they have one of their covenants of choice let's say something like swarming mist or aoe then they can talent into something like cold heart for a single target nuke or even of course breath of Sindragosa. all this choice gives them very good single target burst extremely high aoe burst very high cleave burst very good sustained aoe when playing with battle Sindragosa dual wheel build or very high sustained single target when playing with the two-hander obliterate based build the ramp up for all of this is very low they don't have many things to manage besides pulling some of the runic power and the runes before the burst doesn't take too much time at all and the new thing which is bringing them into s tier these are similar things to what they had before but the different thing is that now they have the possibility for a two-hander build a lot of the casuals were happy about this nostalgic thing of frost dk's being able to use a two-hander again but the real important thing now is the fact that it can give you a different build the scaling on the damage of some of the death knight's abilities and talents are based on main hand weapon damage completely ignoring the offhand this means that if you're using a single weapon, the base damage of these things, for example, is going to do more damage, which is going to give your two-hander more options. There are going to be several talents scaling better and abilities scaling better with your two-hander build and others with your dual build. It's going to give you great options for the damage profile you want to do. This is further enhanced by legendaries. Things like Kultira's Favor for your single target, Rage of the Frozen Champion, even Absolute Zero, for even stronger and more often AOE burst. And this leaves them in a very nice position because they also have good defensives. The baseline leech burn for CC immunity and leech. They still have ice pan fortitude and they still have anti-magic shell. The utility, as I mentioned for unholy, would have been borderline enough to make them S tier. Besides the grip, which is nice but not mandatory, anti-magic zone might be mandatory in your raids. And it's not a one-off. It's not a single buff like Arcane Intellect. You might even want two anti-magic zones for a raid encounter, even three maybe, because of how strong it is. This might even open up more options for your raid because it is so strong to have defensives like Barrier in your raid setup, but now with a DK being able to bring anti-magic zone, maybe some weaker healers without very strong externals can make an appearance in your raid comp, being covered by DKs. I know this is a stretch, but you know, let's be positive. The negatives though they are still very slow slow as fuck this can hurt them a lot in a raid there is quite a few movement in quite a few fights and you know dk is just 
other weakness is the fact that all of this goodness related to damage profiles is purely and completely exclusive. You either set up all of your talents and your legendary and even your weapon for your single target build or you do it for your AoE and cleave. You can do it at the same time. So you have to choose encounter from encounter, but it still leaves you in a better situation than other classes. Some other classes might be wanting single target burst for arcane and they're fine, but if they want sustain cleave and AoE, they might have to respec for to frost. You don't have to as a frost decay in this situation. So this is still positive. So all in all, frost decay is very nice, very complete. Their damage profile fits very well, the bosses and the encounters in Castanatria, the amount of burst they can dish out and the frequency in which they can, plus the variety between the dual wield and the single target build and the anti-magic zone make them an S tier spec. We have Sabrog. What a surprise. Sabrog has gotten quite some nice QOL changes. They have gotten slice and dice baseline. This is very good for a spec like Sabrog, because Sabrog have something like auto techniques, meaning the faster the auto attacks, the more the resource generation. They have a very strong, currently, conduit, deeper daggers, giving them massively increased damage during their Shadow Dance window with Shadow Strike, thanks to using their finisher. Their cycle of damage based on symbol of that and Shadow Dance gives them very high burst single target, very good burst AoE, but what is really strong in is going to be the best funnel in the game and the best priority damage in the game. Everything is triggered by Shuriken Storm, giving them one combo point per target hit. This makes it insane in many fights where there are going to be some fodder enemies here and there just running around, allowing Sabrog to get full combo points. Not just good because of the good damage of their Eviscerate, which, which is going to be one of their main damage dealers alongside their Shadow Strike, but also because of Deepening Shadows, giving them cooldown reduction on their Shadow Lance per combo point spent, which makes it insane in multi-target fights, where they can abuse this. You all remember Zul, and the reason why Sub has had to be nerfed, right? It had been nerfed, but it is still perfectly functioning. Zul was an extreme case. Their damage is already good in a lot of these fights, but any fight with a lot of small targets running around, even just 3 or 4, from Stone Legion Generals to Sun King Salvation to at least 2 of the phases of Denatrius, one of the phases, which is going to be the hardest phase of Inerva, are all going to have this type of damage profile, and Sabrog is just going to go crazy on this, with this system. They still, being a rogue, have great mobility, they have great survivability, thanks to, you know, their cheat death, their evasion, their cook of shadows, they faint, yeah, yeah, yeah. I already mentioned this multiple times, you will know this by this point. Okay, what about the negatives? I'm, a, I'm an assassination main, I'm depressed. Just tell me the negatives. They are, of course, very cool and reliant. Outside of their Shadow Dance and Symbol of Death, they are very poor. And when you only have one target, your single target is much poorer than if you had two, three, or four targets next to your primary target. They are very reliant on uptime. Uptime meaning how often they can stick to the target and keep generating and spending combo points because of the aforementioned deepening shadows and even shadow techniques. So losing uptime, having to move around and not doing damage is going to hurt them more than other specs. Their mistakes are very punishing because of their damage is so concentrated in an 8 second window that fucking up the 8 second window, not planning it properly, being forced to move by a mechanic is going to hurt them even more than other specs. You know, this is the problem of all specs with very high burst. You need to plan it properly because if you fuck up the burst, you're gonna massively lose DPS. The last problem we should mention, although this could be temporary, is that they have been undergoing some rounds of nerfs. Their Akari Soul has been heavily nerfed. Their Deepening Shadows used to be one and a half second cooldown reduction. Now it's down to zero and a half. So they have gotten quite some nerfs over time and their Covenants are pretty weak. Serrated Bone Spike has been nerfed to the ground, Sepsis and Echo and Reprimand are not very strong, and similar to Assassination, they can rely on Flagellation to plan around it and give them 20% haste in their window of burst, but that's just about the only reliable one they have, which is also not very strong. All in all, they are still a very solid S tier spec, mostly because of their insane funnel and priority damage and high single target damage in any one of those situations, while retaining things like an immunity, which is very good. So. They are currently the most effective. And with this we are finally over this 30-minute uh, long video about the mini DPS rankings for Castelnatria. We can see that, unfortunately, at the bottom we have three only specs for DPS. They have no options, they have no rerolls available to them. Then, a little higher up, we have the two warrior specs, which are bound to scale more. 
and they're going to have a much stronger niche later on in the expansion as they have had for like every single expansion in the game after that i would say from b tier and up all the specs are viable all the specs can work just fine with the ones at the top currently having some of the best types of damage profiles for the encounters a little bit of a note for avok as mentioned due to their essentially required debuff that they have out of all the lists i think uh, retribution paladin is the one that has improved the most and we could actually technically say subtlety as well since the last time subtlety became a staple in the raid compositions was after mid legion once it started scaling out of control they basically went quiet for an entire expansion so it is a surprise and i would say also frost dk frost dk has not been very relevant for most of bfa so it would be a surprise to see them in s tier so with this uh, i take my leave i am done Soon there's going to be the last part of the range DPS, so we will have completed the rankings for the DPS. I am still, unfortunately, locked on this account, since my original Eisenhardt account is still um, unreachable, unfortunately. It's a pain having to restart, but uh, thank you guys for the support anyways. And while you bicker in the comments about which spec is OP and which spec is not, in the meantime, I'm gonna go off and cook some dinner.